You are what you eat, but so are your animals. The quality of food that you provide your animals doesn't only affect their health, but also the overall product that they provide from meat to milk and even the eggs. As homesteaders, we do so much to rid ourselves of processed foods. This is probably why you are raising animals also. But why do so many, when ridding those processed foods for themselves, give them to their animals? It seems to be that most people when choosing food for their animals will either stick to the feed that the previous owner was feeding their animal or just go to a big box store like Tractor Supply or your local co-op and then choose the picture of the bag that relates to the animal that you're feeding. And then what most people come home with is a big bag of processed pellet feed or conventional feed filled with a bunch of synthetic ingredients, fillers, or even seed oils. So you might be able to say that you're providing your family with farm fresh meat, eggs, and milk, but you might be putting on the table something that's not much different from the grocery store. I called around to over 30 different feed stores throughout the US to figure out what the most common source of feed was. And it seems to be that pellets not only are the most common, but also the most convenient for people to source. And it's what's stacked on most shelves throughout the US. But there's a huge cost to this convenience. These pellets are heavily processed, filled with binders and fillers, synthetic ingredients, and they undergo a grinding and heat treatment. And it's this heat treatment that actually causes a lot of the issues. This heat treatment often exceeds 160 degrees, which degrades or destroys essential vitamins, amino acids, and even enzymes that your animals need to provide a quality product for your family. Studies show that vitamins like vitamin E and B2, along with amino acids like lysine, and even essential probiotics that your animals need are destroyed in the processing of these pellets. I linked a few of these studies down below in the description. And it's because of the loss of these vitamins that inferior synthetic forms are reintroduced back into the feed. These synthetic forms of vitamins are not as bioavailable, meaning that your animals need to consume more to get the same amount as their natural counterparts. As homesteaders and naturally minded people, we know the importance of proteins and fats. And that heat treatment I told you about earlier negatively impacts the stability of those proteins and fats in the feed. This affects the fats and proteins ability to support growth and immune function within your animals. Whole grains, mash, and other natural food sources aren't subject to the same high levels of processing that pellets are. As a result, they maintain their natural vitamins, minerals, and enzymes. Mash feeds, especially those that undergo fermentation, help provide natural probiotics which vastly improve gut health. Whole grains are easier for your animals to digest, meaning they absorb more nutrition from less food. This translates to healthier animals with better growth rates and healthier immune systems. But I want to show you how to identify and where to find these more natural food options. This is whole grain wheat berries. It's all I have as whole grain. But what you would see is the whole form of the shell of the husk of everything that's inside of the feed. This is a typical soy mash that you might see. You could see corn inside of here and you could see a lot of the different forms of the feed inside of here. The reason why it's mashed is because it's been smashed or mashed inside of a mill. This is a soy free mash. You could still see a whole lot of those holes and husks. It's not full corn, it's a bit mashed up, but also you can see that it's not as yellow. And that's because the protein source from the feed doesn't come from soy, it comes from pea. So it's a little bit greener inside of here. But don't be confused with crumble because crumble ends up being just mashed up pellets. So I didn't wanna just rely on my area and my experience here in Middle Tennessee where I can source a lot of different feed options. I wanted to put myself into your shoes and this is why I called so many different feed stores and mills throughout the US to see what it would be like if I was buying food in somewhere like Southern California or Minnesota or all of these different places. And although I was able to find some feed mills or some more naturally minded feed stores, it still was pretty difficult to figure out the best areas to be able to find or buy natural feed. And what happened is a lot, and what I found is a lot of these people, even in the feed stores themselves, weren't aware of the process or the degradation that comes with pellets. And they weren't even able to provide me with a list of feed that wasn't pelleted form. It was hard or seemingly impossible to find a natural form of food that wasn't pelleted in so many of these locations. And to my surprise, even some of these smaller feed mills weren't just taking natural ingredients. They were mixing in synthetic vitamins and even 
even in some locations they were mixing in alfalfa pellets into their mash. But the benefit to these smaller feed mills is that I was actually able to get a straight up answer from them. When I called some of the larger companies, what I got were customer service reps which weren't even familiar with the heat treatment that went through some of their pelleting forms. So that made it a little bit difficult. But the benefit is that with these smaller, more mom and pop feed mills, I was able to get all the answers I needed from even every ingredient added, everything that had to do with the feed. And the benefit was because those hands, those people I talked to were the people that did the mixing of the feed themselves. There are a few companies, one specifically I know of that delivers nationwide. There's one that delivers to the Southeast, which is where I live, which is where I buy my feed from. And that is called Coffee Organic Farm and Feed. The other one is New Country Organic. They deliver nationwide. And they are somebody I trust a lot more when it comes to their organic and their mash feed. My goal was to add a ton of different places in the description of where you can go and buy your feed. But I think the better option, a good place to start to find a reputable place in your area that may have these more natural feed sources is to call your extension office. Every state in the United States has an extension office. You can call them and a lot of them are going to be able to direct you to a more natural feed source or you can call around to some of your local feed stores. A lot of the times they will know of a local feed mill that may be able to bag your feed right then and there for you. And you'll be able to call them, see what's inside of the feed, see if it's ingredients that you're okay with, and then move on from there. A lot of them may even deliver. I hope this video encouraged you enough to switch out your feed source and offer a better feed for your animals, which will in turn offer a better feed for yourself. And be sure to subscribe because in a future video, we're going to be discussing the fermentation process of food, which can't be done or at least not as easily with pelleted food. Right now, I'm just drawing out the video to give you time to click one of these next videos. Could be this one. Maybe even this one. I think this is a good one. Maybe try it. Now's your chance. Three, two, one.